Hello everyone, Fixer here, We're back with Firewatch on the audio tour. We just, uh, we just did that one. Moving on to the fireworks. Oops, wrong button. So we're moving on to the fireworks, or the campsite where the fireworks are at. There. That way. Um, actually, you know what? I think it's meant for you to go the other way. I'm gonna go this way just in case there is an audio. In fact, I need to check out what number I need to pay attention to these numbers. Five. I'm not entirely sure if they are meant to be done in a row. I, I don't think it's a big uh, deal. But we're going to try it anyway. Alright, so there were none there. There's one over there. Wait a minute. Am I going the right way? I am. Okay. Oh, Alright, I know where I'm at. There's six. Jake. Oh, hey, Sean. You did a neat thing here in the game that I like a lot, which oh. is when you make a dialogue choice with Delilah about what this uh, this dangerous hill should be called. It shows up on your map, and I like that a lot. Yeah, when we were putting the map system together, well, actually, the map, weirdly, was one of the latest things, one of the final things to come into the game as a fully fleshed out piece. Um, but an upside of that is we built the map using a lot of tools we already had. For instance, the system that checks which things you have and haven't talked about, which things you haven't have and haven't found in the game. Use the same variable list as our speech system. So when I was putting this together, I realized, oh, not only can I put a, a mark down on the map when Henry finds it or talks about it, but I can totally look at the same tools we use for dialogue and figure out what the player said and put it on the map. And the end result felt really natural. I actually wish we'd gone a little deeper on it in the game, but I'm really happy with what's in there right now. Also, please name this uh, shitty boss is going to get me killed because that's objectively the best name for the hill. Is that your handwriting? Yeah, you got to write all, you got to cram that in there, but it's still readable. So what they're reporting at, and I, I really like this too. Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. Right here, where you get to choose the name, and they did this a few times in the game, like they said, and uh, I liked it as well. I, I think I chose... That. What about shitty boss is gonna get me killed, Hill? Oh, is that Absorka Indian? Maybe, maybe Creek? That's actually English for not in my job description. And here they even, they put it on the map. Shitty boss is going to get me killed, Hill. Killed, Hill. I like that. I don't know. It was fun. But apparently, if you look, there are, um, numbered audio stations everywhere. So, Cool. I'm assuming that one down there is probably going to be seven. All right, we can put that away now. Rapple. No, no, no! Oh. That would hurt. And hopefully this is number seven. I don't need to report it. Well, it is locked. And the fireworks, of course, stopped. The sun is advanced. Holy cow. Lots of stuff up ahead. Hi, this is Ollie Moss, and I was the art director on Firewatch. I'm Jane. Hi, Jane. Let's talk about this teen zone. Oh, let's, party talk, about zone. This, let's talk about the teen zone. <laughs> um, so the teen zone is one of the first areas that we uh, that we used as a sort of art test to see how mm -hmm. we would go about building the rest of the game. We knew from the pretty early on that, like, uh, on day one, you will start from the tower, and you will have to head down to the lake. And somewhere in between, you mm. will see some teens, and they're partying. 
And so we <laughs> called this the teen zone because this is where all the teen stuff is. Yeah, and it was and we it was important to us that the reveal that it was a group of teens was communicated through the level design. So the idea was that you just kind of like walk through some trees and burst mm -hmm. out into this scene where a campfire was still burning. And uh, you had a pretty strong idea of what it what you wanted to look like. Yeah, I just wanted to put some big angular rocks in there, <laughs> which is basically the the like my modus operandi for the entire game. Um, but we wanted to have a big angular sort of rock which came yeah. on as Pride Rock because it looked so much like the rock from The Lion King. No, we did name that Pride Rock, didn't mm -hmm. we? That rock does serve as a very uh, strong landmark pretty mm. early in the game, and it kind of does point the, the player in the right direction. Exactly. Yeah. Um, should we talk a little bit about our process for sure. designing these areas? Um, so in the beginning, when uh, we just have um, like no concept art, we will just mock it out with just gray, literally just gray boxes and a gray terrain. And then uh, we will take screenshots and give it to Ollie to be like, please pretty this up, Ollie. Oh, well, first of all, I'll do, a, I'll do a terrible, terrible garbage sketch and pitch it to the team. And if people like the gist of it, then we'll go away and do a bit more of a detail, more of a detailed mm -hmm. drawing. And then you would go. Yeah, we'll add in some more shapes. Mm -hmm. And then we just keep going back and forth with paint overs from mm -hmm. Ollie. And then it's just a sort of uh, tennis, really, just back yeah. and forth between, between the two of us until, we're, until everyone's happy with what we have. Yeah. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. So I did it while they were talking, but one of my favorite parts of the game is when when he picks up a beer can and you have the option to, to clean them up, right, and hold them. But if you toss one, he's like, ah, fuck it. I don't care. And that shit cracked me up. I loved it. Um, another thing, and I didn't do this in the original game, but I guess I, I heard that you can do something like this. Um, uh, that probably could have ended poorly. <laughs> That's great. How'd you get fired and wind up in jail all on your first day, Henry? I thought it'd be a good idea to chuck some Roman candles into a smoldering fire pit. A regular forest burns. Oh, before we move on, I want to check off to the side. There's probably an audio stop over here. This is where the raccoon is. Did I do this in... I don't know if I did this in my original playthrough. This guy right here. Um, there's a critter out here. A raccoon. I can't understand you. Because I'm whispering. Because you're whispering. Alright. I, I remember doing it now. I, I'm pretty sure. She does the 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 dialogue can be a little different depending on how you scare the raccoon away. But anyways, that's not what we're here for. Let's move on. Let's go to the camp. Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Uh, what if they're naked? The idiots down at the lake. Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. Uh, there are. Uh, Panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why? Because you're 12? I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Shush you! Boy, enjoy dealing with that. Are they going to leave me alone so I can do this? I think so. My name is Patrick Ewing. I worked on uh, tools and gameplay programming. The teens, Patrick. Let's open some old wounds here. This is a real, this is like going back to like an old battleground and being like an, on these exactly. hollowed grounds. Yeah, I died on this hill. Happened. I died on this hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the most complex uh, interactions in the game, if not the most, right? Yeah. And it uh, it was in the game from the very first vertical slice we did, and then I think we kind of added to it as we played through it and saw like, oh, we should be able to throw the boombox in the lake, obviously, right? Okay, the the teens need to react to the boombox being in the lake. Oh, but then they should also react to you putting it down. What you should do if you're making a video game is build relatively ironclad, predictable AI and systems that react to inputs. But instead, we built a series of relatively flimsy state machines that were like, if this, if this, if this, but not when, and also if. Right. And uh, we're able to create this scene as designed. Um, 
and Patrick was sort of the the shepherd of this scene. So whenever anything would break, if you were to throw the boombox and the teens were not to respond, or you leave with the boombox and they would talk about something else, it was Patrick's job to ferret into the right. state machine and right. figure out what was going on. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. There are so many different ways that this scene can play out now, depending on what you choose to do. Uh, do you throw the fireworks at them? Do you talk to them and then start messing up their stuff and throwing it in? Um, and it ends up being pretty uh, n like believable. They feel like real characters. Uh, it's just such a crazy spaghetti code in the in the back end that I'm always terrified when I see someone play through it, that there's <laughs> some so interaction You're that so we didn't afraid think about. That right yeah. now the player is interacting with the teens in a way that is completely not by the book. And I, I mean, luckily we haven't... The beads of sweat are, are, are building on your brow. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a PTSD response at this point. We would see the bug reports if this was actually still breakable. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to stop initiating that kind of stuff while they're talking because it's a little distracting, or at least... It's, it is for me. I think you fell prey to the Forest Service's big recruiting effort when it comes to, you know, how the hell you ended up out here. I saw the job in the paper and figured, you know, what the heck. What the heck? I've got no ties and no life. Better go spend what's left of it in utter loneliness. <laughs> Something like that? Yeah, thanks to last summer, the bump in Forest Service budget actually allowed for us to advertise for the job. Glad it worked. What happened last summer that accounted for this, um, windfall? Jeez. I mean, the federal government almost let Yellowstone National Park burn to the ground? Ring a bell? Yellowstone is, like, what, 15 miles away? Why would they do that? Well, the short story is that for 60 years, we got very good at not letting forest fires happen. And then about 15 years ago, they decided that forest fires in wilderness areas like Yellowstone should be left to burn. So that's what they did. All right, enough for the chit-chat. I didn't hear about this. Enough for the chit-chat. There were reports that the entire park was gone. Dan Rather telling the country that President Reagan didn't care on the nightly news. I mean, what the hell's he going to do? Smoke jump in and snuff one out for the Gipper? All right, I'm going to let that one die out. I did not expect one over here. I got a 30 cents an hour raise because we can't have another fiasco. The goddamn park can burn down again. <laughs> I love her. Hello, my name is Erin Yvette and I'm the voice of Chelsea. Hi, my name is Nikki Rapp and I'm the voice of Lily. <laughs> and we are the, <laughs> we're the drunk teens in the lake. <laughs> the obnoxious, skinny dipping, drunk, firework blasting teens. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the first time that you've played a Lily though. It is not, it's actually <laughs> the third time I've played a Lily. My first Lily was Lily Zanotto in Psychonauts. And then I played the lovable Lily in The Walking Dead from Telltale. <laughs> and now I'm uh, Lily in Campo Santo's amazing game Firewatch. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the backstory behind my character's name is that it's Sean Vanneman's girlfriend's name. <laughs> Slightly less backstory for me rad, personally. Though. But she's a cool person in real life, so I, it's fine. Although That's I wouldn't good. say that this character is based off of her because this character is, uh, <laughs> I guess I guess I always pictured her being changing majors constantly in college because she like can't decide what she wants to do. Like she's gone through like psychology and sociology and like and just constantly flunking out of everything. Yeah, <laughs> so she's I just think... switching until something sticks. That's good. You had ambition. I don't think my character really. <laughs> I think she just was uh, kind of drunk, cutting class. This isn't the first time that they've done something like this. <laughs> Not at all. I think they were professionals at it. They were good. They were good at getting people to buy them booze, you know? Totally. That kind of a thing. That's good. Stand outside of 7-Eleven. Whenever people ask me, like, oh, who did you play in Firewatch? It's like, oh, remember that time on day one where, like, <laughs> I saw these silhouettes of, like, gyrating women? I was one of those. I yeah, probably like, called bras. you a fucking asshole. <laughs> with me <laughs> that's a dubious honor but it's still an honor it, totally yeah <laughs> a little little tiny bit of a really cool game thanks mm -hmm. <laughs> you're welcome holy cow there's another one already and it's number 44 i really wonder how they decided to do the the numbering system because this is the natural progression of the game is right here so why is this one called number 44 
And why is number five not blacked out? Because I've done number five. Hmm. So I wonder what, what, what the deal is with that. Hi everyone, this is uh, Ben Burbank. I'm a programmer at Campo Santo, uh, predominantly doing graphics work and performance stuff. And I'm here with Jane. Hi, I'm back. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about, in general, how the world sort of streams in. Mm -hmm. This is a big open world game. There are, like, what, tens of thousands of trees somewhere in there? Yeah, and we have how many chunks of the world that we stream in and out? There are a hundred plus? Uh, yeah, I think over 120. One of the big challenges with that was we have to remove parts of it when you're not looking at it because video game consoles and computers don't like to draw things mm -hmm. that aren't uh, Especially seen. not a lot of trees. Yeah, it's a lot, <laughs> a lot of work for that little graphics card to do to try and draw all those uh, that big forest. Mm -hmm. So, um, the canyon's one of the spots where we have like obvious occlusion where mm -hmm. you can't see most of the world. Um, so we unload uh, like the tower hub. The mm -hmm. tower that you see in the canyon is fake. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small fake version. Yeah. Um, which is a common trick. Yeah, so it's like a very low cost version of what it would actually be there. One of the biggest challenges for Jane and people building the levels was figuring out line of sight. So mm -hmm. how far can you see? Like if you have a point where you can see entirely across the map, we had to be very careful about what is actually loaded and what's actually drawing. Yeah, so even though the canyon is pretty much a straight corridor, we had to put in some kinks in there. So, you know, um, like right sort of in the middle, there's a little area where you have to go around a rock. This is so that we could uh, make sure you won't be looking at the lake when we um, basically delete it out of the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the game also, you know, it's it's sort of non-linear. Like, there's a linear story going on, but there's the ability for the player to just go backwards. Mm -hmm. So we also had to keep in mind, like, reverse line of sight yeah. and things like that, which is a little different than a traditional action game or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a little puzzle game almost to figure out when we stream in and out things so uh, hopefully you don't notice any of it because if you do that's not that's actually us not doing a great job you probably will notice it though sometimes i'm sorry <laughs> about that so there you go that's why those rocks are theirs because you can't see the lake behind us that's been deleted interesting i had to stop because i know going through that little part right there that's where the thunder dialogue comes in so i wanted to avoid that should hit thunder like there we go. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning. It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and try not to get hit by lightning. I got hit by lightning when I was nine years old, so I'm safe. It's not going to strike twice and all that. Well, there was an old lookout named Roy Sullivan who got hit by lightning seven times. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, it wasn't what killed him. What killed him? Suicide. Would you believe? Of course. And here's another instance when you grab the horn. Oh, you report it. There's a horn in here. There's a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone, and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. See? How it changed? I like that. That's nifty. Ah. Great. No uh no audio tour here. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. But in the cave, I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. I used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. I'm gonna break something. Another one of my favorite parts. Hello! It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no! I didn't mean to do that one. Seriously, it's completely fine in here. God damn it. What? I can't play with the Echo again? Did they take it out? I wonder... And maybe this is too silly, but I wonder... Why would they take that out? Where he sings, um... What the hell's the name of that song? I don't remember. 
But anyways, why did they take out the singing of the song? Was it a copyright thing? Hi, I'm Jane. We're back. And I'm Ollie. Let's talk about this cave, Ollie. Oh, let's not. This cave really gave us all quite a bit of headache, actually. Mm. I was actually kind of having a mini panic attack because one of the hardest things to light in games, actually, is um, any area that's sort of half in, half indoor and half outdoor. And mm. this uh, cave is um, a pain in the butt to light. It is. Well, having... Um we thought you'd be an old pro at this, having worked <laughs> on a game called The Cave. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it, it caused a lot of problems um, in terms of the logic gating of uh, the environment switches because with the, with every yeah. time the time of day changes in the game, it has to it then like sets that time of yeah, day because there's no so, doorway really. So the way the cave is lit, yeah. it actually just changes the time of day in the whole game. So like when you hit a trigger, if you could somehow magically transport yourself back outside the cave, you'd see like the yeah. sun spinning through the sky, the, yeah. like, the, the sky changing, um, and it was a real, it was really hard to make that process invisible to the player and make it yeah. feel natural. Not to mention that when you're inside the cave, everything also has to look really dark. Mm -hmm. And um, we use a method called image-based lighting throughout the game. And that basically means that um, all the objects, like all the trees and rocks, just look out to the sky to see what their lighting should be. And so in the cave, we actually had to do uh, sort of like a, a fake sky for anything inside that is just pure black. So the, the lighting inside would be appropriately dark but still navigatable to a player without the exactly. flashlight. Exactly, and so, and also to be able to, to um, have a smooth transition when you're going from the, um, you know, brightly lit outside to the really dark inside and coming back out again and having the, all the appropriate logic for the time of day, like Ollie said, it was just a real pain in the butt. Okay. This is the guy with the flashlight up there. This is Ned. There's some guy out here. Some guy? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything? I don't know why I triggered that damn dialogue. I, I don't think so. Henry, there's there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's, it's, it's madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. I don't remember seeing those during the original playthrough. Hmm. I love the little details in Firewatch's branching dialogue. Um, there are a lot of very subtle, hard-to-notice things that Sean put in uh, while writing it that you really couldn't notice without multiple playthroughs um but they add up to this feeling that you're talking to real people who uh just like real people kind of echo back things you said earlier uh who uh you know continue in jokes that have been established etc uh, etc cetera, et cetera. and one of the subtlest that i don't think i even noticed till i was rewiring the game midway through is the spooky figure who you meet uh at the towards spooky the end of day one. Yeah. figure if the teens call you a creep Henry calls the guy who's flag putting a flashlight in his face a creep. Right. He goes, <laughs> there's hilarious. some guy out here creeping? Or he says something like, he's a creep out here? She's like, yeah. a creep, Henry? He's like, right. yeah, there's a guy who's spooking me out here. I don't, right. I don't like it. And, I mean, I like doing stuff like that. I pay a lot of attention to sort of the sort of infectiousness of language. Yeah. Uh, especially in this office, someone will start using a turn of phrase that then I'll be at lunch with someone later, I'll be out with Jake or whatever, and then I'll hear the phrase theory crafting th th through them, yeah. you know, where it's like, you know, like if we were somebody was saying, oh, there was a total creep outside at the bus stop, then it wouldn't be long, like 18 hours later, it would be totally conceivable to hear Jake be like, oh yeah, this guy, that guy's kind of a creep. I don't know if we should have him by or whatever. Yep. And I'd be like, man, okay, like that word is now like bubbling along the surface of our social network here. Mm -hmm. And I like, people are like that. People are weird, sort of like passive, like non-participatory sponges sometimes. Yeah. And I just like putting that stuff in the writing. And you can do that in games in a way that you can't do that in other media. If you do that in like a book or something, it's so double underlined mm -hmm. that it feels like you're making a big point as an author. But in a game, because it's player driven and it's passive, it just feels causal and 
the way the world works. Did it just cut off? What is that out there? I'm looking northwest. You see that? What is that? It looks like the base of uh, a fire watchtower. You see this thing on the left here? That looks like the stairs. And this is the the um, supports, whatever. And this is like the, the floor. It's just that there's no actual room. It's almost like they have it built. What the hell is that? And it's to the northwest of here. Right? And there I am. There's Northwest. So it feels like it's like north of the cave. Right? The cave is like over here. So it's north of the cave. I don't know. I, 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 I would like to see that during the day. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to check it out later. Daisy. We lean on the sign, it busts down. And I think there's one more. Oh. I think there's one more. Yep, there's one right there. We'll do this one, I think we'll call it an episode. Chris again here. Hey, and Jake, congratulations, player. You have completed the teen loop. Oh, man, that's true. This is the end of what was what was originally called teenloop.unity, a scene file in our game engine Unity, because we thought that that was just going to be the file corresponding to the to first... To this piece of, of game that you've just played. Yeah, this first big objective. Uh, but then we kept building, so all of Firewatch is in fact saved inside of a file called teenloop.unity. So yep, know that for game. the rest of your play experience, you are inside of the teen loop. Yeah. This part of the game, you probably are right now, if you're listening to these commentary notes basically in sequence. Um, the music is either about to kick in or has just kicked in. Uh, it's dark. You're finding your towers and broken into. This, I really strongly remember feeling when this went into the game and had the music, which was actually the first music implemented in the entire mm -hmm. game. Um, all this stuff together felt to me like the first real moment of assertive tension in the game, and it felt really crazy. Yeah, because we me. had um, our environment system working for the first time, so the sky turned to nighttime, yep. and uh, our world logic allowed the tower to switch into its broken into state just when you were off in the mm -hmm. world for the first time. And then when that music finally came in, we're like, oh, wow, okay, this is a world that's alive and can be tense and cinematic. Yep. Uh, and all of it happened without us ever having to cut the camera. I remember being, we were all very proud and stoked mm -hmm. of that. For sure. That was like right before we first demoed the game, I think, at the, at the Penny Arcade Expo. Yeah, because the end of day one was the end of the first demo. Yeah. Right before this, there's the moment with the, the creepy guy mm -hmm. in the woods. And that was sort of a moment of tension. But that's also arguably maybe not, because it's immediately deflated by Delilah. Right, but this, this like, was like, holy crap. Okay, we're, I remember feeling kind of nervous about it because it was like the game is declaring this is a tense moment. And if it falls flat, we have failed. We can't, like, make a joke to defuse it. Um, and I think it basically worked, and I was a real, real relief. Yeah. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell... You should get inside. Fuck me. I'm going. Yeah, I... There's my broken window. I agree with them. I know who I'm sleeping with tonight. There you go, sir. Yeah, I had to agree with them. It was, it was, a, you know, the the creepy guy was creepy, and she did deflate it a little bit. Although I didn't, I was, I didn't feel completely deflated. I still didn't trust the creepy guy, which ended up being dead. But yeah, definitely at this point, it was, um, there was tension. Someone broke in. Hey, what? I gotta talk to her. I think to end the place. thing. Threw oh. My typewriter out the window. Motherfucker. Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. Cool. We'll leave it at that then. Um, sweet. I, I do believe I have to talk to her a little bit more in order to end this. In fact, I'll just do that. I'm gonna have to fix the window. Tomorrow, Henry. You won't be cold. Is it not kicking in? 
Okay, I put in a call. Okay, there it goes. I don't want to respond to her. I want to see what she says. Read this to me tonight, Forrest. Thank you. And we'll have some coffee. Do you have any idea who would have done this? <laughs> I don't want to respond to her. I want to see what happens. All my stuff fell off here. He he totally destroyed my area. This jerk. I, I can't believe someone would do this. I mean, I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about dude, who knows what out there. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm going to call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since, I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. Sounds good to me. I need you to feel safe out here. I feel very safe. Well, I sure don't now. You will. I, I promise. Cool beans. Day two. Sweet. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.